Hi, this is Outdoors writer David Figura, and today I'm with Bill Perkins of Rochester, who earlier this summer won the 2021 um, Bassmaster Northern Open on Oneida Lake. It was awesome. Yeah, it was a great few days, something I'll never forget. And uh, yeah, it's congratulations on your win there. That's that's impressive. Thank you. Um, today, I wanted to talk about fall bass fishing in the Finger Lakes. What's different or unique about fishing during the fall for bass versus the spring or the summer? Right, right. So I, I would say the, you know, some of the best, the better factors of fishing in the fall would be that there's less boat traffic, you know, generally there's not as many people on the lake. Um, typically speaking, the fish are, you know, feeding up for winter. So every, all the animals have kind of this urgency for winter and pack it on weight. And uh, I think that's one of the huge benefits of fall fishing is that the fish tend to bite better. You know, they're in more of a feeding mm -hmm. mode um less people on the lake you know they're less pressure they're able to kind of set up without having jet skis and stuff buzz over their heads um so i think just those are some of the better factors you know the conditions wise it's usually not hot and muggy like we've had up here for a while usually the weather's really nice you know hoodie and jeans and you can kind of get out there and enjoy yourself and have some pretty good days to the water and many days i've had the lake to myself you know there's three four boats on an entire finger lake you know um wow. so it's really nice um, is it different fishing for largemouth versus smallmouth in the fall? Oh, so the I would say, right, right. I would say that it's not that it's, you know, typically speaking, um, it's not always different. Ha they, smallmouth and largemouth tend to, you know, go towards different habitats. So you'll find largemouth more around, you know, grass and trees and smallmouth kind of like a clear hard bottom, um, uh, more rocks and stuff like that. So I, I think both species uh, are feeding up at that time of the year. And I think you could catch them both in similar spots, maybe not so much so in the summer, but in the fall, you know, you could catch a large mouth and on the very next cast, catch a small mouth at like Canisius Lake. Um, so I think mm -hmm. they kind of are just, like I said, a little more active and uh, a little more willing to bite and a little less pressured that time of the year. Um, so that's, I would say more unique to the fall. Give me three or four or whatever of your your lure bait recommendations for fall bass fishing all right so so i kind of picked out four baits that i think you could catch either species on largemouth or smallmouth this is just kind of a basic swim bait like a boot tail swim bait just on like a, a jig head it's just kind of a boring thing that you can kind of cast out and slowly reel back in um any color is, on that or i'm sorry this is yes so typically i'll try to i'll try to go towards like more bait fish this is kind of uh um you know a color maybe if the water was a little dirty this is like an electric blue this is a kytex swim bait there's a lot right. of different companies that make something very similar to this but i would definitely lean towards more natural looking bait fish uh type colors yeah. um and then this is a bait everyone probably knows it's just a, a sanko a wacky rig sanko very much just like a worm this is just like a brown color um this bait does a lot for you all of these baits kind of do a lot for you you don't have to put a ton of action into them as the fishermen themselves so you can kind of cast them out let them do what they do kind of uh fish them slowly and, and they just get bit for whatever reason they just have a tendency to work um so that's the wacky rig sanko just a, a plastic worm that you kind of hook in the middle and you can see as this thing sits here it just kind of undulates and, and has good action it does the same thing in the water um a real simple bait that's kind of a, a great catch-all is called a ned it's just like a, a small little worm it's on this head and what this bait does is it just kind of stands up real good on the bottom and this tail kind of floats up and uh the fish can't seem to resist it it's kind of just like this very simple kind of basic bait um i don't know if you could see that yeah and, yeah uh, and it, it it just really catches them i mean it's a great bait all year round if it's not too windy, it's kind of a finesse bait, so you can't have too much wind because it does kind of get blown around a little bit. But it is a great smallmouth uh, catcher, a great largemouth catcher. Um, if there's any bait that you're going to try out of all these, I would say the Ned um, is the option, you know. And then this is just a, a fall standby. It's just a topwater bait. Really any bait that you like. This is just a bone uh, colored spook. And uh, this is just, if you look up fall topwater baits, this is just like such a staple bait. Uh, top water is by far, I would say, the most fun out of all these baits to fish. 
but it also could be the most heartbreaking, you know, having a big fish miss your top water um, or having them come off, you know, but it's just, it's so much fun to watch a big small mouth come up and eat that stuff. And uh, um, like I said, it just kind of increases the likelihood of losing them. But I do think if you're having a fun day and the fish are active, then, you know, I would definitely lean towards throwing the top water just, just to have fun, you know? Yeah. But those are four baits that I think that you can get bit on by either species in the fall. Um, like I said, it tends to be, you know, a little easier to get bit in the fall. I think a lot of, especially now, uh, at our finger lakes, there, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of fishing pressure, pressure, and a lot of people fishing and on the lake. So in the fall that kind of gets geared back a little bit and it can be a little bit easier to get bit. So it's a great, great time to be out there. You know, well, how about the depth of fish that you fish? Yeah. In? Right, right. So that's always like a like a key factor. I think in the fall, you can it's like at the biggest advantage if you don't have a boat. I think there's a lot of fish that do tend to move shallow and feed more aggressively. So you could definitely catch them from the bank. Um, if you have a boat, there isn't any like rule of thumb as far as like depth goes. I think generally speaking, there is more fish shallow. Like I say, they're feeding up more aggressively. Um, so you don't necessarily have to have a boat. You know, I know a lot of guys who very successfully fish from kayaks or from the bank and catch large mouth and small mouth, um, you know, this time of the year. And, and there's a ton of information out there as well on YouTube and like various, you know, platforms where these guys, you know, give seminars and talk about different things. If you want to learn more, there's a ton of information out there. So. Now I know as a, in the Bassmaster tournaments is all artificial baits, but I also know a lot of people, including my father and others, who, who, we're nothing but live bait fishermen. Uh, oh, what, yeah. about, what live bait would you recommend using during the fall? I right, mean, you right. Don't do so, tournament, but. Yeah, yeah. So I actually don't use a ton of live bait, but that uh, live bait is awesome. So I, this past weekend, I spent it at Honey Oil with my, my small two-year-old son using what are called like spikes, which are just like these little white grubs, sort of like yeah. an ice fishing lure. Um, for parents, you don't got to like tear up worms and stuff like that, you know, which kind of can kind of be a pain, but no question the staple of any smallmouth is a crayfish. So if you can get a crayfish, um, live crayfish, I mean, I, I think you'd do really good on those minnows and stuff, um, are all, another great bait. Any live bait, uh, definitely kind of takes the edge out of like having to put action into the lure and like imitate what you're trying to do. You know, it can, yeah, it can yeah. be easier to do, but like I said, some of these baits, I think the top water is probably the hardest to fish out of these baits, just because these other three baits I kind of, like are kind of like do nothing baits, like the swim bait kind of cast out and reel in the the net and the sank. Oh, you just kind of fish them as slowly as you can tolerate. I think the top water you have to you have the most experience to kind of get it to walk and uh, and to fish it appropriately. But like you say, live bait just it swings the learning curve. You know, I think those fish, you know. They're not easily tricked, but they they are very easily tricked with live bait, you know. So it's a great option, especially if you have kids to keep the action going. You know, they just want to catch bluegills and and perch, and and it's it's really only fun to a kid to catch uh, to catch fish, you know. So we're not trying to instill, you know, hours worth of patience like it takes to win a tournament, but just to catch a lot of fish and and get bit and have fun and get a chance to hold them and throw them back. I think is. Uh, is a huge advantage to, to live bait, you know, and, and getting people like just bit and having fun catching fish, you know? 